What is going on everyone? Mr. Kalani here with Mitchell Mitchell to talk to you today about the three major African kingdoms that played a role in the Great Convergence. The three kingdoms we will talk about are the King of Ghana, Mali, and Songhai. Historians think the first people in Ghana were farmers along the Niger River. Sometime after AD 300, these farmers, the Sangniki, were threatened by nomadic herders. The herders wanted to take farmers' water and pastures. For protection, groups of the Saniki families began to band together. This banding together was the beginning of Ghana. Ghana was in an ideal position to become a trading center. To the north lay the vast Sahara, the source of much of the salt. Ghana itself was rich in gold. People wanted gold for its beauty, but they needed salt for their diets to survive. Salt, which could be used to preserve food, also made bland food tasty. These qualities made salt very valuable. In fact, Africans sometimes cut up slabs of salt and used the pieces as money. As trade in gold and salt increased, Ghana's rulers gained power. Eventually, they built up armies equipped with iron weapons that were superior to the weapons of nearby people. Over time, Ghana took control of the trade from merchants. Merchants from the north and south then met to exchange goods in Ghana. By 800, Ghana was firmly in control of West Africa's trade routes. Nearly all of the trade between northern and southern Africa passed through Ghana. With so many traders passing through their lands, Ghana's rulers looked for ways to make money from them. One way they raised money was by forcing traders to pay taxes. Every trader who entered Ghana had to pay a special tax on the goods he carried. Then he had to pay another tax on any goods he took with him when he left. Ghana's rulers gained incredible wealth from trade, taxes on traders, and on people of Ghana and their own personal stores of gold. They used their wealth to build an army and an empire. Like Ghana, Mali lay along the upper Niger River. This area's fertile soil helped Mali grow. In addition, Mali's location on the Niger allowed its people to control trade on the river. Through this control of the trade, the empire grew rich and powerful. According to legend, Mali's rise to power began under a ruler named Sundiata. Sundiata won back his country's independence and conquered nearby kingdoms, including Ghana. Mali's most famous ruler, however, was a Muslim king named Mansa Musa. Under his leadership, Mali reached the height of his wealth, power, and fame. Mansa Musa ruled Mali for about 25 years, from 1312 to 1337. During that time, Mali added many important trade cities, including Timbuktu, Chennai, and Gao, to its empire. Traders came to Timbuktu from the north and the south to trade for salt, gold, metals, shells, and many other goods. Religion was also very important to Mansa Musa. In 1324, he left Mali on a hajj or pilgrimage to Mecca. Making this journey once in their lives is a spiritual duty to all Muslims. As he traveled to Mecca, Mansa Musa introduced his empire to the world. The stories of Mali's wealth and religion spread far and wide. Because of Mansa Musa's influence, Islam spread through a large part of West Africa. Mansa Musa wanted all Muslims to be able to read the Quran. Therefore, he stressed the importance of learning to read and write the Arabic language. He sent scholars to study in Morocco. These scholars later set up schools in Mali for studying the Quran. To encourage the spread of Islam in West Africa, Mansa Musa brought back artists and architects from other Muslim countries to build mosques or buildings for Muslim prayer throughout his lands. The architectural advances in cities like Timbuktu, as well as an organized government, emphasis on education, and expansion of trade all combined to make Mansa Musa's Mali's most successful ruler. Much of Mali's success depended on a strong leader. After Mansa Musa died, poor leadership weakened the empire, and by 1500, all of the lands the kingdom once ruled were lost. Only a small area of Mali remained. In the 1300s, Mansa Musa had conquered a rival kingdom of people called the Songhai who lived along the Niger River. As the Mali Empire weakened in the 1400s, the Songhai grew in strength. They took advantage of Mali's decline, regained their independence, and eventually conquered most of Mali. One of Songhai's greatest rulers was Muhammad Tura. 
who chose the title Askia, a title of military rank. He became known as Askia the Great. Like Mansa Musa, Askia the Great was a devout Muslim who supported education and learning. Under his rule, the cities of Gao and Timbuktu flourished. They contained great mosques, universities, schools, and libraries. People came from all parts of West Africa to study mathematics, science, medicine, grammar, and law. Askia understood that an empire needed effective government. He created a professional army, and to improve the government, he set up five provinces within Songhai. He removed local leaders and appointed new governors who were loyal to him. He also created specialized departments to oversee various tasks, much like a modern-day government offices do. Soon after Askia the Great lost power, the Songhai Empire declined. Songhai was invaded by the Moroccans, the kingdom's northern neighbors. The Moroccans wanted to control the Saharan salt mines. They had superior military power and were able to take over Timbuktu and Gao. Changes in trade patterns completed Songhai's fall. So there you have it. Those are the three kingdoms of Africa that you need to know. So just remember we have Ghana, Mali, and Songhai. See y'all later.